Hi everyone, in this problem we have an infinite sum and we're being asked to determine if it converges or diverges. So this is an interesting uh, problem. So solution. So whenever you're doing series, you know, the first test you should always at least mentally do is the nth term test. So if you take the limit as n goes to infinity of whatever is here, and you don't get zero, then it diverges. So let's see what happens. As n goes to infinity, well, one over n approaches zero. So this is just the sign of zero, which is equal to zero. So no good, right? Uh, the nth term test fails. So you cannot use that in this case. So the way to do this problem is actually to use the limit comparison test and to note the following. Note that uh, sine x is approximately equal to x when x is close to 0. So you need to know this fact uh, in order to do this problem. So uh, it makes it much, much easier. Why? Because then this is your a sub n, and then your b sub n for your limit comparison is 1 over n. So whenever you have sine uh, of 1 over n, just know that uh, this is going to be your b sub n for limit comparison because sine x is approximately equal to x whenever x is close to 0. So the limit comparison test says that if you take the limit as n goes to infinity of a sub n over b sub n, and you get a number that is positive. In other words, if this limit is finite and positive, then the series for the A's and the series for the B's will both behave the same. So if you add up the B's and you get convergence, then the, the A's should add up and converge. If you add up the B's and get divergence, then the sum of the A's should also diverge. So let's go ahead and take this limit to verify that we can even use a uh, limit comparison. So a sub n is our sine of 1 over n. And b sub n is simply 1 over n. So if you take the limit here, you'll notice that it's of the form 0 over 0. So we can use L'Hopital's rule. So this is equal to the limit as n goes to infinity. And we're being a little bit abusive here when we use L'Hopital's. Uh, you know, we pretend that these are functions of x when we differentiate, and so we, we have to keep that in mind. The derivative of sine is cosine, so we get cosine of 1 over n times the derivative of the inside. So the derivative of 1 over n is negative 1 over n squared. So how do I do that? Memory, right? 1 over n is really n to the negative 1. And so when you take this derivative, you put the negative 1 in the front and you just get that. So boom, there it is. Same thing happens here, so negative 1 over n squared. So these cancel, take this limit, you get the cosine of 0, which is 1, which is finite and positive. So the limit comparison test applies. So the LCT applies. And the limit comparison test says that the sum of the a's and the sum of the b's will both behave the same. So if one converges, the other converges as well. If one diverges, the other diverges as well. So now we simply have to explain uh, what happens to the sum of the b's. So note that the sum of the b's, so if we look at the sum from 1 to infinity of 1 over n, this is a divergent p series. So this diverges by the p-test since p equals 1, which is less than or equal to 1. So therefore, our original series also diverges by the limit comparison test. So therefore, the sum from 1 to infinity of the sine of 1 over n diverges a lot of writing by the LCT. Boom. So the key to this problem 
is to know how to do it. And it, it really is something that, you know, if you haven't seen it before, it's kind of hard to figure this out on your own. I mean, it's, it's pretty tough. Um, the sine of 1 over n, you know, is approximately equal to 1 over n, right, whenever n is big, because whenever this is close to 0, right, because sine of x is approximately equal to x when x is close to 0. So 1 over n and the sine of 1 over n have the same growth rate, and that's why this is a good choice for your comparison series for the limit comparison test. And remember, when this limit exists, this limit a sub n over b sub n, when you get a positive number, that basically means that a sub n and b sub n, they grow at the same rate. And so because they grow at the same rate, the sums of the a's and the b's should also behave the same, right? If one converges, the other should converge. If one diverges, the other should also diverge. And that is the intuitive thing here. That is the most important thing. Uh, to get from the limit comparison test. That's why it works, right? That's actually uh, why it works. Nice problem because it's a little bit non-standard. It's not as easy as the other limit comparison problems. Uh, but yeah, still kind of an interesting, interesting problem. Good luck.